Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? And this is Maurice Bishop Chess. So you know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I have a beautiful game I want to share with y'all. Uh, I play um, the fantasy. Actually, uh, this wasn't a fantasy open. This was the... What is this? Oh, the French Wing Gambit. <laughs> so I wanted to show y'all this. Um, I don't I don't really show too much of this, but uh, I definitely want to share it with y'all. Because I'm so used to showing y'all the black line and the l shot system. And probably a little bit of the Smith Moore. But I'm going to be doing different openings and I'm going to just um, show y'all exactly you know what I be doing and stuff. So without further ado, let's actually get started. Um, obviously I played as white. And uh, he played as black. So e4, e6, knight f3, d5, and then e5. He goes c5, and I go b4. So again, guys, this is the French wing gambit. It's the French wing gambit because black plays the French. But even though he plays the French, uh, I still hit him with the wing gambit. Uh, normally, the whole setup is like e4, c5, and b4. You know, that's usually the wing gambit. But of course, this is the French because he plays the French and not the Sicilian. So the French wing game. Uh, he takes and I immediately uh, attack the center. The whole purpose of this uh, opening is to, you know, sacrifice the pawn on the wing so that I could um, grab the center. And then um, uh, initially, or not initially, but uh, once I grab the center, I'll be able to develop my pieces as fast as possible and then try to start an attack. Uh, knight c6, now go a3. Again, sacrificing this pawn because I want a solid um, center. Uh, so he goes a6, he doesn't take this pawn. Um, the whole point, if he does take this pawn, um, I will have, uh, you know, the a file once I take with the knight captures or maybe, um, with bishop captures a3. But initially, if he did, um, uh, let's say if he did capture the pawn, I would just go c3. I'm, I'm not really too worried about the pawn because I could take that regardless. It's not like he could really defend it. I mean, this pawn is going to automatically be lost. But instead of me taking back, I will actually go c3. As you see, I have a nice um, pawn chain, which is um, straight in the center. And then also, guys, I have um, the a file, which also uh, gives me an advantage for white. All right. So uh, in this case, he actually went a6, and I decided to take the pawn. Because again, guys, it gives me this a file. I have an open a file. Uh, he takes, and then I go c3. Not a problem. Uh, bishop b7 is played. I go bishop d3. Again, developing my pieces. Again, I'm happy with my position. You know, again, I still have the a file. You know, I develop my own um, second piece with bishop d3. Uh, he goes bishop d7, and I immediately develop my second piece with, or I said my second piece, my third piece with knight b to d2. The whole point of knight b to d2 because 90% uh, of the time, uh, your opponent is going to always go knight a5 to go knight b3 or maybe knight c4. And usually with knight d2, I'm going to have this here because I'm going to be ready to exchange um, this knight uh, for this knight that's on d2. You know, because leaving a knight on, on c4 or maybe b3 is, you know, it's, it's going to cause some problems. So that's why I always go knight d2. So b5 is played, you know, he's just um, trying to get some space um, on the queen side and things like that. So I just castle king side. Knight a5, again, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Usually when they come knight a5, they want to go knight c4. If he goes knight c4, I already have in my mind that I want to take on c4. So you're probably wondering, like, okay, okay, this is where, you know, I get stuck. You know, when it comes to the middle game, I'm not sure what to do. Uh, well... Uh, I go rook a2. Uh, I go rook a2, guys. This is kind of like a, I don't want to say a, a, a waiting move type thing, but this is just in case if he goes knight b3, but with some other moves. Uh, not obviously, he can't go knight b3 automatically because I have the queen here. But eventually with rook a2, uh, it's a really good move because eventually I may want to go bishop b2, maybe go queen a1, you know, just to put more pressure on a file. So always remember that. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why I go Rook A2. Uh, I, I kind of look at it as a prophylactic move, but uh, they may look at it as a waiting move, but it's really not a wait. Well, you could say it's a waiting move, but it's really not a waiting move because, again, uh, I may have opportunities to maybe double the Rooks on the A, on the, uh, a file. All right. Uh, knight C4 is played. Uh, I immediately go Knight Catcher C4. Uh, like I told y'all, I said I was. Um, B Catcher C4, and I go Bishop C2. 
Again, I'm happy with the position. I have the A file. Uh, he has an isolated pawn on the queen side. And again, with me having to work on A2, uh, eventually, you know, once I develop my bishop, maybe I could go queen A1 uh, or maybe put the rook on A1. You know, who knows? But uh, this is the whole point of rook A2. Uh, I find it very useful to uh, leave this on here. So he goes A5. He just pushes down. Um, the reason I go A5 because, uh, again, um, he was only defending this pawn one time with the uh, rook on A8, but by him pushing it on A5, uh, he can actually defend uh, not only with the rook, but he could defend with the queen as well. Um, so in this case, I go G3. Uh, this is kind of like a... I don't know. I, I ain't gonna lie, guys. I, I've been reading a lot of uh, uh, positional books and everything where, like, in positions like this, you know, uh, it's good to have the G3 point where you can go H4 at times because it looks good in the end game. It's like one of these end game principles. So I find myself um, doing uh, this a lot, you know, in positions like this. So, as a matter of fact, let's see if the engine thinks that I'm good on that. Yes, the engine even recommends me uh, with the G3. Uh, I see it a lot. Uh, I've been looking at um, even Madness Carson's uh, book. Uh, where he'll he'll somehow play G3 as well. So I kind of took that technique and everything. Um, it's very, very useful uh, when you're in a middle game like this, but you can use this because it does give you uh, a little leeway where you can make, you might want to uh, move the king up somewhere or maybe you just want to start pushing pawns, you know, in the end game to get some type of advantage. Uh, I find it very useful. Uh, so G3, uh, Bishop F8 is played. And I thought this was a mistake. Because um, when he did bishop f8, uh, I immediately went knight g5. Uh, I go knight g5. And the whole purpose of this, guys, if he decides to go uh, h6, my whole plan was to go on um, queen h5. Uh, that was my whole plan. Uh, even if he decides to go like somewhere like g6, my whole plan was to go bishop captures g6. So if f captures, queen captures g6, king e7, and then I have the move uh, bishop a3, uh, checkmate. And, you know, curtains is closed. So that was a little tactic idea that I had in mind. Uh, but obviously, I mean, this guy is a really strong player. Um, he didn't play the um, the A6 as I thought he was. Uh, instead, he played G6 because he didn't want to allow my queen to get to H5, which was really a good move. But even though it was, it was a good move, but again, it still leaves um, some weaknesses in his area. And the reason why I say that, because, again, I still move my queen to queen f3, because now I'm threatening uh, checkmate on the f7. All right. So uh, he goes knight a6, and I decide to go h4. Um, he goes knight f5. I go bishop captures f5. Uh, I did thought about going g4, but, again, it's not going to work because of knight captures h4, so I don't like it. So, uh I just go bishop captures f5. Um, obviously, if he takes with this pawn, uh, this wouldn't be a really good move due to queen captures d5. I'm threatening to checkmate. Uh, if he tries to uh, go queen e7, I'll uh, immediately take his rook on uh, queen captures a8. And then also, I will win this pawn on a5 as well. Um, but it's not even just that, though, guys. Uh, another option that I do have is after this check, uh, if he does block with the queen, then uh, this is really a one end game for me because once he take, now I have knight captures f7 check where I'll be taking his rook. And again, uh, this pawn would be lost sooner or later. All right. So those are my ideas. So, and that's why I went with captures f5, but he took with the right pawn. He took with g captures f5. So uh, by him going g captures h5 now, or f5, uh, this pawn is not on g6 now. So what do I do? I go back to the weakness. I go back to queen h5, uh, hitting queen captures f7. Uh, so um, so obviously, guys, uh, he's really kind of, he should, uh, he probably already know that he's uh, kind of lost already because um, the only thing that he uh, did was actually queen e7. And then I hit him with bishop a3. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm pretty much threatening to win his queen. Uh, if he does go back to queen d8, queen captures f7 and checkmate. Uh, another thing is, uh, if he decided to maybe go queen b6, 
Uh, again, I, he still runs in the threat of Queen captures F7. It's King D8. Um, you know, there's so many things I could do. Um, knight captures H7, where I'm also threatening um, Bishop G5. Uh, and then maybe uh, Knight F6, where I'm threatening me as well. Uh, again, this is still uh, pretty nasty. Not only that, I do have moves like Rook uh, B2, where I could control the B file. Uh, this is just really uh, nasty stuff. All right. And then not only that, I'm threatening Queen F6 uh, check, where I could potentially um, try to win a Rook. Uh, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a lot of threats, guys. It, it is a lot of threats. All right. But, of course, uh, he didn't do that. Um, so after queen h5, bishop a3, um, he knew that he was, um, pretty much lost in his position, so he decided to take the, the bishop, you know, give up his queen, and I go queen catches f7 check, uh, king d8, rook catches, uh, a3, bishop catches a3, knight catches e6 check, king c8, knight f4, rook f8, and then queen catches d5, and then, of course, my opponent resigned in this position due to the fact not only am I hitting uh, the rook on a8, but I'm also threatening e6 with a nice pass pawn. And then, of course, I still have an extra rook. So um, this is pretty much um, curtains um, in this game. All right. So uh, I hope you actually um, enjoyed this game. Again, guys, this is the French wing gambit. Uh, I don't really show too much of these games, but if you look back in a lot of my videos, I do have that. Uh, I probably would do a playlist uh, for this opening so that y'all can uh, look at it even more. Uh, but it's definitely um, a very uh, nice opening uh, to learn because I still play it to this day. All right. So, guys, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, comment. Let me know what you think. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.